Okay, hi everyone. Today we're working on shell method, a new way to find volume. Uh, it's still following the same type of principle idea that we're spinning around, but instead of creating washes and disks, we're going to use cylinders. And let me go ahead and give you an example of this. Um, if I give you a, a graph, that's oh, terrible. And we'll give you a, as a function that's a something like this. Darn it. Gave me the wrong vertex. Okay, that will take that. And we'll say this is uh, y is equal to x squared, negative x squared, I'm sorry, negative x squared, plus uh, 4. Okay, that'll be 4. That'll be uh, 1, 2. That's 2, right? So we have a graph. And I want us to block off, uh, we're going to spin around the y axis, rotate around the y axis. And we're going to be bounded by y is equal to 0 and x equals to 0, right? Bounded by y equals 0, x equals 0. So just to visually, we're going to stop here and here. We're pretty much just graphing this part right here, right? Just get the idea. Okay, Miles is here. All right, so we're going to, then we're going to spin this around going this way. So we end up with our little shape that looks like this. All right. Okay. Of course, this looks like a circle for us. So we said we're adding up uh, circles here. So we're looking at pi r squared. So the way we first decided to do this was we have to rewrite our axes. One reason why is because instead of being a dx, right, this would be dx, little shavings this way. We're actually going this way. So this is actually a dy problem. So we know we're going to integral dy. This is our volume. Okay? And we're adding up circles. So we say pi r squared. So pi r squared. So that's our r squared part, right? So what's the radius? The radius is the distance from the center going this way out this way. It's a different color. So that's our radius. This is our radius. Now, is this radius an x value or a y value? This is an x value, isn't it? But we're given a y equation. And y goes up. This is y. That's y. So it's the wrong value. So what we have to do is we have to spin that around. We say y is equal to negative x squared plus 4. And then uh, we spin it around and we say y minus 4 is equal to negative x squared. And then um, so we get rid of the negative. So 4 minus y square root equals 2x. Right, so we actually have to do the work. And in this case, since it's a nice, easy y and only 1x, right? not x squared and x, just a simple x squared problem, we could solve for x. And it turns out, as we said before, this x value, this x value is this x value, which turned out to be our radius. Easy peasy. We just plug it in and say, hey, that's my radius. Fine, take the radius and leave me alone. Y, sorry, 4 minus y. That's our radius. Pi r squared, we're adding a bunch of circles. Uh, we're giving this volume of circles a little bit of uh, thickness. Our dy, that's our volume. We add it up from 0 to 4. Okay, crawling up from 0 all the way up to 4. Okay, that works. And this is easy because we were able to change from y's to x's. But what if we weren't? Or could we take this a different way? And so this method is called shell method. Because maybe you could think of it as you're stacking shells on top of each other. I don't know. I would like to more think of this as Russian dolls. You guys ever seen Russian dolls? They kind of go on top of each other, right? And in this method, we're going to look at the same picture, except we're going to cut this up a little differently. So let's go ahead and draw that same image. And we have this curve going on. Let me draw a little nicer. Okay, we're going, this is my curve shape. But instead of doing um, circles, like we said, right? We used to do circles. Don't copy this part, right? We used to do circles, right? Okay, circles. We're not going to build this using um, disk anymore. We're going to use 
cylinders. And this looks like... Oops. They look like this. Okay. And we're going to build cylinders like to a toilet paper roll. And these layers are going to layer up. Right? You guys can see this layer. It's going to layer up. And then this would end up being um, our little object here. Okay, it looks a little creepy, but we're building this with uh, cylinders instead. And that's why they call it like a shell method, because it looks like a shell. Let me pause here. Okay, so what we're doing is we're building cylinders, and I want you to go back and think about, don't overthink it, just think about one cylinder. What is the, what is the measurement for a cylinder? And we have the equation for a cylinder. The equation for a cylinder is 2 pi r h. Why is it 2 pi r h? It is a circumference of a circle, of a circle, and then we're going to multiply that by a little bit of h. Or, oh, sorry, some h, which is our height. Circumference times height. Is that the surface area formula or the volume? It is. So if I take a cylinder, right, and I roll it out like a toilet paper, right, we, we take it and we roll it out. This circumference of the circle is rolled out, so that's 2 pi r. And then the height here is this height here, and then we end up getting an area. Right, we take our cylinder shape, we roll it out, we end up with area. Now, if I multiply this by a little bit of thickness, we became, become an area, becomes a volume. Right? So that is what literally what we did back here. We said this is our area times a little bit of dy in this case, and that gave us volume. So we're just choosing a different shape. In our previous example, we used circles. Now we're using uh, cylinders, which is really rectangles. And we're going to multiply this by a little bit of width to give that volume. And that's the only difference in this problem. So we're really just adding cylinders together. So for this method, it's actually, I would say, um, why is this method important? It pr allows me to switch to a different axis without switching the variables. So let's go ahead and see why that's true. So a couple things I want to make note. This is y is equal to negative x squared plus 4, right? Let's go with that. Now, take this picture and compare it to this picture here. What part would that be? Would that be the radius or the height? Would that be the radius or the height? If we drew a different cylinder, let's say this is my cylinder over here. What would the y here be? Would that be the radius or the height? That's actually the height of my cylinder, isn't it? You guys see that's the height? Now what's the radius? The radius is just your x value. It's a distance away from 0. And that's your x value. It turns out we have everything we need already to use this version of the equation with what's given. We're given the height, which is our y value, the distance to the top of the cylinder, which is our height, right? That's our turns out to be our y value here. And we have our radius. This r value is just an x value. So this problem, let's go ahead and set up an integral for this. To add up all these cylinders together, we're going to add up integral from, let's say, a to b, whatever that is, set up. We're adding cylinders. Uh, so cylinders. And we're going to multiply this by a little bit of width, which is a little bit of dx. So this is our formula, a to b, of pi r, no, sorry, oops, wrong formula, 2 pi r h, that's our cylinder equation. And then we're going to multiply by a little bit of dx. Why is it dx and not dy? Because we're giving ourselves a little bit of width Right, this is our dx 
we're giving our toilet paper a little bit of thickness. And that's in the DX direction, the vertical thicknesses. To rewrite this, this is um, the integral from A to B of 2 pi, since 2 pi is a constant. And you just have to plug in your radius and your height. In this case, that's your y value and your x value, dx. So for our problem, since we said the radius is just from the x-axis to that cylinder, that's just an x value. And our height is related to our x value being our y. So this problem is actually pretty easy. 2 pi integral from, in this case, from 0 to, we said 2. That was a 2. That was a 4 up here. From 0 to 2. That's the which way I want my x to go. So x times our y value was negative x squared uh, plus 4 dx. Okay. In this case, did I really do any algebraic work? No, I just made sure I knew where the parts were and I plugged it in without converting anything over at all. Now, why is this important? Well, you could say, Mr. Go, couldn't we always change y's to x's? You know what? If the problem was as simple as y is equal to x squared plus 4. But if I change this problem slightly, let me go ahead and just write a different type of problem here. What if I, what if I wrote y is equal to x squared plus 4 x? Can you guys solve for x in this problem? Can you make this x equals 2? And the only way you could do that is, mm, can you? See, if I factor it out, you can say, oh, you can factor it, Mr. Ko, sure. But still, try to get x alone. You can't. It's very difficult for us to change this problem so it's just an x problem. So the point is, when I see problems like this, it would be impossible or very hard for me to make this an x problem. So what I would do, use cylinders instead. Okay. So here's the basic premise of the shell method. Shell method is I'm creating cylinders using the y value here as my height. You guys see that's my height already. So there's no converting. I'm changing the shape means the object changes, the, the style changes, and we're kind of good. Now, would this give me the same answer? Now, I want you guys to take out your graphing calculators or however you guys uh, use your calculators here. And I want you guys to actually ch check it out. Plug this equation into your answer. Uh, the volume for our first solution was pi integral from 0 to 4 and then the square root of 4 minus y squared dy if we didn't make any mistakes and then I want you to compare that to actually let me write that over here so um, find the volume of integral so we said pi r squared which is the square root of writing it 4 minus y 4 minus y squared dy from 0 to 4 and then I want you guys to find the volume of our new version here which is 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 of x minus x squared plus 4 dx and see if you get the same answer okay so maybe some of you guys could Here and here. Oh yes. So okay, if you guys get the answer, go ahead and write it in the chat. Okay, so the answers are gonna be the same. Someone's telling me eight pi. Eight pi. So the answers are the same numerically, but you can tell here they don't look alike. These equations totally don't look alike because they're using different, different methods. The left one is using circles, pi r squared. The right one is 2 pi r h, and that's going to be cylinders. But they should give you numerically the same value. Now, I'm going to give you guys a different problem here. Let's go ahead and look. I'm going to paste something here. So if we look at this problem here, 
if I ask you, find the volume of a solid formed by rotating the region y is equal to zero, okay? A bound by y equals zero, oops. Around the y-axis, I don't need to edit this. So we're bounded by y is equal to zero, so that's the floor. The graph is a square root graph, x is zero, and x is one. So this is what we're cutting off. About the y-axis, if I spin it around, it would look something like this. Okay. And we spin it around. You end up with this bowl-shaped thing, right? Okay. But in order for us to spin it this way, we would have to change our formula. Because spinning this way is y is equal to, spinning this way is x equals to. Now the problem with this spinning it this way, we end up with actually two different boundaries. We are bounded by, first, take a look, that is my first boundary here, stop at this equation, followed by a second boundary here, by a different equation. See our r changes. We're looking at pi r squared. The r for the top is bounded by this equation here. But the r on the bottom is bounded by r is equal to 1. Then when you write the integral, you have to say, fine, from z where are we going from? We're going from here to here, that's one equation, and from here to here is a different equation. So it turns out it's going to be two integrals, 0 to call this a, 0 to a, and then from a to 1. So this problem is not impossible, and we could do this. But the problem is we would have to do a couple things. We're going to first convert this to an x value. So y is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Flipping it around, uh, 1 plus x squared is equal to 1 over y. Solving for x squared, we have x is equal to the square root of 1 mi divided by y uh, minus 1. Right? I got rid of the 1 and then I took a square root, plus and minus. I'm looking at the plus side only for this graph on the right. Now, at what point do they meet? You have to now say, okay, when does this equal to 1? When does 1 equal to the square root of 1 over y minus 1? So to solve this problem, to solve for that y value where they meet, in this case, if I square it uh, as 1 equals to 1 over y minus 1, so 2 is equal to 1 over y. Uh, so y is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, fine. This is 1 over 2. Right? That's the y value. So from 0 to 1 over 2. One over 2. We're at pi r squared. Pi pi r squared. The radius for this equation is pi r squared. So our r value is our x value, right? That's our x, 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 x. That's the radius of our disk. So it's 1 over y minus 1 square root squared dy. The radius for the bottom is just going to be 1, 1 squared dy. So for this problem is actually kind of easy to figure out. It took us a lot of steps and you had to be able to, to keep up with it. So this would be our volume equation, pi r squared, pi r squared, of two different sections. Again, we had to split it into two integrals because this r here, right, this r was different than this r. But if you did this using cylinders, let's just take the cylinder that they have already. Let me redraw this. I erased too much. If we just use theirs that they have, take a look. Here is our cylinder. Let's look at the characteristics of the cylinder. I'm going to draw it out on the bottom. Let's see if they'll let me. No, they won't let me do it. If I draw out my rectangle here, this is 2 pi r. Okay? But take a look, this r value is just x. That's just x. Easy peasy. What's our height? Take a look, what's the height of your toilet paper roll? 
the height is bounded by this y value. Our height is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. So our equation for the volume using cylinder method, uh, shell method, is 2 pi integral. Okay, we're going to go from 0 radius, 0 radius to 1. That's my radius, from 0 to 1. That's how the shells are being built out. Our height, so our radius first was 2 pi r. Our radius was just x, right? That's just x. Our height, h is 1 over 1 plus x squared and dx for our volume. Which one is the easier setup? The shell method. Both would give you exactly the same answer. But the right method here, we have to convert from x's, sorry, from y's to x's, so we have that new radius when we're switching our axis. But the shell method keeps our y value and instead calls out the height of my cylinder. So that's a big deal. That's the, the big like switch around in our brains. So we have two methods to deal with us changing axes. If we could draw a cylinder, we can switch this to the cylinder method instead of switching our axes. Let's do a, another problem. Now what happens if our cylinder itself will switch axis? What if I say we're going to rotate around a different axis here? How does that change our problem? Okay, let me find one where I do switch it. Okay, here's our problem. Uh, we have y is equal to x squared plus 3, y is equal to 1, x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, and our axis is now at x equals to negative 1. So we all pretty much know what this graph looks like. It's x squared plus 3. It's a parabola, 3 spaces up. 1, 2, 3, a parabola, 3 spaces up. We said we're going to spin around negative 1. Here's negative 1. Lucky for us, since it's a basic parabola, we know this is going to be 4. Right? Because of one space over, one space up for a parabola. But we're also bounded by these constraints. The constraints are x is equal to 0. So we're actually stuck right here. x is equal to 0. x is equal to 1. Turns out that's also going to be 4. We are y is equal to 1. We're up here. So we're looking at this shape right here. That's our constrained area. And we are rotating it around uh, the axis x equals negative 1. So we're rotating it this way. Let me draw your mirror image here. Is there a cool with seeing that? Wait, the the rotation uh, is just kind of confusing. Is it? It's going around the y-axis, right? Yes, except the y-axis is at x equals negative one. It's shifted over to the left. Sure, sure, okay. Yep, got gotcha. you. Good. Okay. So, how do we use the equations that we have uh, normally? Normally, since this is a washer problem, we would have taken the large shape minus the small shape inside. Right? That's typically what a washer problem is. We go large minus small. This would have been integral of pi r squared minus, so big R squared minus little r squared. And then in this case, it would be a dy problem. Okay, that's fundamentally what we, did, we would have done. In order to do this, we'd have to, of course, change our equation right, to become the outer minus inner and sure, you could do all that changing around. But if we change this into cylinders instead, all right, let's take a look. How will this problem change if we're looking at cylinders? I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to take a look at 
the parts that we need to find this cylinder. And the cylinder doesn't have to do with holes or disc, sorry, washers or disc. A cylinder is, just take a look here, I'm going to take one sliver, one sliver, and then I'm going to rotate this around. And this is my cylinder. We just have to calculate what the equation for that one cylinder would be. All right, let's do it. Paper towel roll. Unroll it. It's 2 pi r and it's uh, h, right? That's our cylinder. What's the radius? The radius is from negative 1 to wherever our x value is. I want you to look at that. It's from negative 1 to x, right? It's from negative 1 to x. So how would you count this? It's r is equal to 1 plus x. Or you could say it's right minus left. So you could write x minus negative 1 is our x plus 1. That's the radius of my cylinder. What's the height of your cylinder? Is it just x squared plus 3? Take a look. Is the height just x squared plus 3? x squared plus 3, that's the graph going all the way to the 0. But does it touch the ground? Remember how it's raised one space up? The height here is x squared plus 3 minus 1. It's short, isn't it? We minus 1 from it. It's a little bit shorter because of upper minus lower. Upper minus lower. So it's a y and 1 is y minus 1. That's the height of my cylinder. So it turns out we have everything we need. Now let's go ahead and set this up. It's 2 pi integral. Our, uh, our value we said was x plus 1. This has changed because our axis of rotation is not 0 anymore. It's negative 1. So right minus left. So the radius is bigger by one piece, by one step. Our height is x squared uh, plus 3x, uh, not 3x, 3 minus 1. You can write that as 2 if you want. Save yourself some time. dx. Why? Because these are little slivers of thickness. Toilet paper. Now, here is the next part. How do I account for that hole in the middle? And that's our a to b value. At what x value do you want to start counting? Are we going to start counting at negative 1? It's actually at what? Take a look here. Take a look at the picture. At what x value do we actually start drawing this graph at? When x is equal to? 0. That's right, 0. And when do we stop? We stop at? Negative 2? No, no. Going to the right. Oh, right. Sorry, my bad. 1. At 1. Turns out, this takes care of the hole for us. We said your radius isn't even a radius to x is equal to 1. And if I plug in 0 here, take a look. If I plug in 0, the radius is already 1. Right, and that's what it is. The radius is already 1, and I take the radius all the way up to 2. Cylinder method helps us so much when it comes to switching our axes. We don't have to worry about holes in the sense that washers and disks anymore. We just have to count where does the radius start and when does the radius stop. Okay, that's uh, changed this problem slightly. Okay, oh no, that's doing a different problem. I'm going to spin it around another axis. Okay. And I guess we'll call it after this. So y is equal to 2 squared of x, y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 4, and the axis is x equals to 5. Okay, so let me draw this graph for you. This is a square root graph. Looking something like that, that's a square root graph, right? Square root graph. I want you guys to only work from 1 to 4, and we're going to rotate around 5. Okay, 1 to 4, rotate around 5. So we're just, this is our graph right here. And we're going to spin around this way. Okay, so if you want to see the image, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to erase this image afterwards, but take a look. It's kind of like, like this kind of bun cake going on.
Are you guys okay with that? It's kind of like a, bu a, bu a bun cake. So my curves are a little not that greatest, but it's not, uh, it's a bun cake. So drawing that, great, fine. It helps your brain work a lot. But you know what? You don't have to. You just have to figure out, is this going to be a washer disc or would it be better if I use a cylinder for it? Now, if I draw my cylinder here, take a look. If I just draw one cylinder, that's what I'm worried about. Where the radius is the distance from the axis to this value here, which I'm going to call x. All right, that's x on the graph. My height, h, looks like that's just going to be the y value. Because remember, I only worry about so many things when it comes to cylinders. 2 pi r h. Worry about your radius and worry about your height. Okay, let's set it up. The integral, 2 pi r. We need to write our r and our h. Let's figure out what our r and h is. Now, this is tricky, but you guys all went through geometry already. What is the radius right here? That's the radius from the axis of rotation to your x value. And it's simply just right minus left. It's 5 minus x, whatever x value, gives you the leftover value here. If it was 1, 5 minus 1 is 4. The radius here is 4. That makes sense. 5 minus 4 is 1. The radius here is 1. That makes sense. So as x gets bigger, the radius gets smaller. So the radius is 5 minus x. Right minus left. Easy peasy. So we minus the axis of rotation to the x value we are on the graph. What's the height? The height is determined. Take a look here. When I drew this, the height is determined by the actual y graph. 2 squared of x dx. Now, where do we start counting and where are we going to stop? The x will start counting where? Take a look here. The x is going to start counting where? The x is going to start counting at 1 to 4. Do we get to 5? Nope. So from 1 to 4. And that's our setup. Is it this incredibly simple? Yes, it can be. If you can wrap your head around what we're like the parts that we're taking, it's actually extremely simple. What's the radius? From the axis of rotation to our point on the graph, that's 5 minus x. The height of my cylinder is given by the function right here. Take a look. x to the height. Where are we starting counting? Because we don't want to go all the way to 5. We start from 1 to 4. Now, if we wanted to rewrite this graph and change it so that uh, we could do this using a washer problem, we could. This would be, again, a large washer, no, sorry, a large disk minus a smaller disk. But then you would have to figure out what the radius of each of these problems would be, the r squared. In this case, it would still be 5 minus 1, or 5 minus... Uh, if we um, spin it around, right, it would be the larger disk and minus the smaller disk. And we probably could figure that out. Okay. Oh, actually, no, it would have been, um, yeah, it would be, actually, this would be a lot harder. It would be, it would be this shape. Oh, no, it would be this shape spun around minus the inner shape. The large shape. Minus this inner shape. That's what I've been. I've been a little more work. Okay, that's it.